Acts 3.19. See, everything starts with repentance. You know what that means? Turn around. Stop doing what you're doing. You're doing about face. If you're walking away from God, turn and start walking toward Him. If you're not serving Him, turn and start serving Him. If you're running from Him, stop running. Start running to Him. You know, it's the worst thing in the world when you get into trouble or you got problems going on. Everybody, we run away from God. The enemy wants you to do that. He wants you to be in fear. Because you think God's going to judge you and He's going to smack you on the head with a big hammer. That's not God. That's not God. Because mercy always outweighs His judgment. And even when God brings judgment in a situation, maybe you are doing wrong. Maybe you messed up. And there's consequences for your choices. I mean, that's the truth. That's one of the problems in the generation today. They don't want the consequences for the choices. They just want the freedom. Choices and no consequences. You know, live and let live. Live and let die, basically, is what it is. But there are. But God's not going to, when even His judgments, when He brings conviction, there's a word you don't hear in church too much, the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Even when God judges your situation or judges your heart and brings conviction upon you, it's not to, to beat you down or to make you bad or negative. It's always to bring you back. It's always to restore you. It's always in love. He loves you too much to leave you in that mess. He loves you too much to leave you the way that you are. Even God's judgments are redemptive. You know, we hear these prophets, they talk about, well, you know, this hurricane wiped out this city or this tornado killed 23 people in this state last night. They well, see, God's judging them. Maybe, maybe not. But I know this. Whatever it is, God is doing it to get people's attention because He wants them to come to Him. Because He wants to restore them. Because He wants to love them. God does not want to send anybody to hell. Jesus died so we wouldn't have to go to hell. Do we understand that? That's the whole point. He doesn't want anybody to go there. Hell was not created for us. It wasn't made for people. It was made for Satan and his, his followers. It wasn't made for us. People choose to go. God doesn't send anybody to hell. God loves every single person, even the worst one. I love to hear these stories. I just I just heard a story about this this lady. She came in the church and uh, people were judging her because of the way she looked and the, and just kind of the way she acted. But what they didn't know, they didn't know her story. She had just given her life back to the Lord. She was just born again. She had been a prostitute for 35 years. And she just got born again. See, God's love is always redemptive. God doesn't look the way that men look. How many of you know that? He doesn't look at people the way we look at them. When we judge people, it's to condemn them. When God judges, it's to redeem them. Big difference. Do we really understand God is love? The closest thing to God's love on earth is the love of mothers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A mother's love because it never gives up. It never runs out. It never quits. It will fight tooth and nail for its children. That's the way God is. Anyway, that has nothing to do with Matthew or Acts chapter 3. But let's read this. Verse 19. It says, Repent ye therefore and be converted. That means repent, turn around, and change. Let's put it in our vocabulary. That your sins may be blotted out. See, that's the purpose that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Man, we don't even talk about the presence of the Lord anymore. Refreshing comes from the presence. And it says, And He shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. This is Peter preaching. After the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit just fell. They all got baptized in the Holy Ghost. They called him out and said, you guys are drunk. He said, no, it's only the third hour of the day. We're not drunk. This is that which Joel the prophet prophesied. This is that. that the Spirit of God would be poured out upon all flesh, that your sons and your daughters would prophesy. He shall receive Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until. See, not, you've got to understand, Hebraic thinking, everything's circular. There's the beginning, but the beginning always comes around and the end always meets the beginning. It never stops. That's why God's in infinite. You know the infinity symbol? 
There's no end to it. The Bible says there's no beginning to God, there's no end to God. He just keeps on going. He's, he's greater than the Energizer Bunny Rabbit. He's better than a Duracell battery. He just keeps on going and going and going and going. It never ends. And everything is connected in God. See, no, nothing. If you're in God, I don't care what it looks like you've lost. God will redeem everything. It may look like it's over, but I'm telling you, God will redeem it. He will bring it back around some way, somehow. Everything is redemptive in Him. That's why Jesus shed His blood. Everything is redemptive. You've got to stop going by the way we feel. You've got to stop going by the way of what they say. You know, at some point, when you're facing adversity, when you're facing trouble, when you're facing insurmountable odds, at some point, this thing's got to switch off and your heart's got to turn on. And you've got to say, you know what? I need Him. I need God to show up. I need God to do something. I just need a miracle. God, I can't do this. I can't figure this out. I'm not smart enough. No matter everything that I've done is not working. You ever been there? I mean, I was there. That's what brought me to the Lord. I was a pretty smart fella. I graduated from SIU with high honors. 3.86 on a 4.0 scale. I was no dummy. But I was trying to fix my life, and I couldn't quit. I couldn't stop doing the things that I didn't want to do. Anybody... Anybody else know what I'm talking about? I tried. I tried in my own strength. I tried in my own knowledge, my own ability. I couldn't do it. I had to come to a place of repentance. I had to come to a place where I acknowledge, you know what? I'm not that great, God. I was prideful. I'm not good enough to do this. No matter how much I try, I still keep doing it. I want to stop. I don't want to live this way. I don't want my children to be to live this way. I don't want them to grow up with, with that kind of a father, with that kind of family picture as an image in their mind of what normal is. So I gave my life to the Lord. And guess what? He took it. I was at the end of my rope and I couldn't fix it. I couldn't change me. I couldn't behave good enough. God's not looking for behavior modification. He's looking for you to come to Him. And let the Spirit of God come upon you and bring heart transformation.